Hello, it's me Daria and welcome to another video. This is supposed to be more of a cozy environment because I'm a little bit sick. And um, I mean, I had something on my mind. This video has been heavily requested on TikTok and I made a short story time there. But I planned on opening up further here on YouTube as I wasn't exactly honest in the past when I hid my intersexuality. First of all, I think that it's very important to make this disclaimer. I never fit in as a boy. I've always struggled to be normal, I guess, to seem like one of the boys. I may have looked like one when I was little, but I was clearly not one. Sometimes things are exactly as they seem. I was not supposed to live as a boy as that was not my real identity. Growing up, I had little knowledge about trans stuff let alone intersex stuff. What I did have though is a messed up image created in the Romanian mainstream media about trans women. And obviously I couldn't relate to that because everything was like a circus. That's why good representation is so important. I couldn't realize I was trans sooner because of this bad representation in mass media. I accepted myself as a trans woman only when I was like 15, 16. And there were clear signs of my transsexuality and intersexuality, but I was not educated on it and I thought they're all just mixed together because I'm a transsexual woman. Most of you know, I started my medical transition when I was 18 and when I was 19, I had my sex reassignment surgery, which to this day, I wholeheartedly believe was the best adjustment I could do to myself. You know, it's literally the change that allowed me to feel comfortable in my own skin. However, even if after I've done it, I was still not aware of my intersex condition. Sorry, I had to do a little background check because my cat is not leaving me alone. Especially when I'm sick, she's always here with mommy. So just as I was saying, I was not aware of my intersex condition even after I had my six reassignment surgery. And I had many consultations with doctors in Romania throughout my life, primarily endocrinologists and psychologists. None of them were able to put the pieces of the puzzle together until I was in my 20s. A lot of doctors in Romania don't even know the protocols for trans people. And just to help you have a better image, just imagine after I had my bottom surgery, I needed a confirmation from a Romanian gynecologist that basically attest the presence of that surgery for the legal process of changing my birth certificate. And out of 13 doctors I called, only one gynecologist was willing to do that just because they were not willing to, you know, have a trans patient. This is literally the circus that Eastern European trans women have to deal with on a daily basis. So an endocrinologist that I met when I was in my 20s finally realized that there can be something more. I was just telling her that I had my puberty very late and I couldn't relate to the physical differences that my male classmates were experiencing while I was still like a child. And also when I had my surgery in Thailand, the doctor said he felt like he's operating on a child as well. So when my endocrinologist heard that, she said, well, maybe you should go get a karyotype test done. That's exactly what I ended up doing. And this is how I found out eventually that I have an intersex condition. Now, speaking of my intersex condition, the De La Chapelle syndrome, a lot of people associate intersexuality with people that are born with both physical organs. It's not always like that. My syndrome only implies the fact that instead of having a Y chromosome, I have two X's with an SRI gene activated in one of those X's, just like normal males have in their XY pairs. That's when I found out I have two XX chromosomes instead of XY chromosomes. I had mixed feelings when I learned it because, I mean, I always knew I was supposed to be a girl, but I'm still a woman of a trans experience. It's crazy that I just happened to be an intersex person while also being a trans person, but it just shows that it's not as uncommon as people think. Actually, my intersex condition happens once in 20,000 babies. A lot of males who live with this condition are not even aware of it because we're not having karyotype tests done when we go to the hospital. It's only something that we focus on when there's a clear problem and usually the problem is infertility. Now the beauty of intersexuality is that it shows how narrowly we see the two 
sexes. We only see them as black and white, but a logical way of perceiving them would be on a spectrum from female to male with more steps in between. Everyone starts off as female, that's why everyone has nipples. Every fetus has potential to stay female, but around five to six weeks of pregnancy, the fetus is introduced to an influx of testosterone that eventually leads to the creation of the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is not necessarily triggering masculine development, however, it determines a male genotype. There are biological women born with XY chromosomes, their phenotype is female and their genotype is male. In my case, because I had the SRI gene that is usually present on the Y chromosome, I had it in one of my X chromosomes and it was activated. I'm still considered biologically male and of course I was also phenotypically male before transitioning. So even if I was born with an intersex condition, it didn't really turn me into a female. It's crazy to think now that I found out about my intersex condition exactly because I'm a transsexual woman and it just goes to show how little we focus on you know who we are, how little we focus on our DNA and what it can show about us. I've heard people saying oh well so you have two XX chromosomes you're a female now. No I'm literally intersex. I wish we collectively as a society stopped putting people in black and white boxes. There are over 8 billion people in this world, how the hell do you expect everyone to fit in two little categories? Why did so many doctors in the past operate on intersex kids without their consent? And unfortunately, it's still happening to this day. I feel like it's important to admit that nature is diverse and it's normal for everyone to be unique in their way. I don't have to be a biological female to be a woman. I'm a woman of a trans and intersex experience and I feel like it's very important for women all around the world to stick to one another and not divide ourselves. Our differences make us who we are. To conclude the video, I never became a woman. I've always been one. Yes, my hormone levels were different. I had a different identity socially, but I was still who I am today. And this is the experience of a trans woman in our society. And I own it, just like every woman should embrace her unicity. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Daria Jane on every social media that is linked down below. Don't forget to follow me so that we can see each other next time. I wish you the best. Mm -hmm.